Um, this character here is Yo-Yo, and I'm going to tell you about him in a few moments. Um, I was going to introduce uh, Butterfly Works, but uh, a colleague has already done that wonderfully. Uh, so, we can move along. Um, as you said, we're working in Amsterdam, and our focus is on developing countries. We're working from a design perspective. The aspect that we try to solve is poverty. Now, that's a huge problem across the world, of course. It's a many-headed monster. There are millions of people across the world for whom life is a day-to-day -day struggle to survive. And this has been a motivation for us to see what we as designers could do about that. Um, We've done a number of projects, and in every one of them, the royal line, the red thread, is making things together with people. So we call it co-design. Um, I'm going to use this diagram to show how we go about the process, because um, it's a process with many partners and phases. We always start with the social need, and that's an aspect of poverty that we envisage if we can uh, intervene at that point in a person's life, it could free up from that daily struggle to a situation where they could move forward again to progress and, and fruition in their lives. Uh, inspiration, we think you can find that pretty much anywhere. Then we get to researching, uh, that's everything to do with the topic and the context, and also finding the right people to work with, to co-design with. Um, the making is, of course, the most fun part, and I'm going to show you a quick making uh, process in a few moments. Uh, we test, of course, as in all design cycles. Um, we always develop a return model. A return model for us is a combination of a business model and a social investment model. I'll show you how that works later. And this whole thing together we call a co-designed solution. So, here comes the example. It's currently in development. The social need in question is early childhood development. That's an overlooked part of people's lives. It's actually the time when you do the most uh, development and growth. If you uh, support cognitive and creative development at that age, it's zero to five years, you have yeah, the biggest impact on somebody's life. Looking for inspiration. Um, it turns out that the wonderful Dick Bruna is a true gold mine of inspiration for early childhood development practice. And we were lucky enough to get the kind support of Mersus, who are the copyright holders of Dick Bruna's work, um, to explore further how we could, inspired by his design legacy, um, apply that for an early childhood development program in developing countries. So, everyone knows this wonderful character. She's called Miffy all over the world and Nainche here in the Netherlands. And she embodies uh, everything that Dick Bruna stands for. So then we get on to the making, uh, the fun part. A lot of workshops happen, co-creation, co-design, uh, product development, craftsmanship. Uh, we started with children, that being the target group in this case. We asked children in Venezuela, where we decided with our partners uh, to explore this concept. Please draw your favorite animal. Uh, we were rather surprised to find out that that little fellow in the middle there, uh, the sloth, is the children's favorite animal, uh, the lawyard. Uh, he only grow, uh, lives in South America, and there they see him as this lovely, compassionate, cuddly, uh, curious animal, and the kids love him just like a rabbit uh, here, what Nietzsche is based on. So we had a lovely group of illustrators, creative writers, early childhood development experts to work with. They got down to the drawing board. These were the first sketches of Yo-Yo, that's Miffy's new friend in Venezuela. Uh, this is working out the face detail. Back to the drawing board after some testing. And then this is the final uh, yo-yo. 
who's going to be the ninja of Venezuela. And this is him when he's a baby, because we're making a children's book uh, about the start of life. That's the first product which will be used to actually affect uh, childhood development. And these are his parents. They still need some work. Um, so how is this all actually going to affect childhood development? Uh, the beautiful character will be used for an awareness campaign, because research shows there's a lack of awareness of this being an important time in your life. Then the second thing is we'll develop all these beautiful products and books to support cognitive development and to sell them, of course, so that we'll have the money to distribute the products uh, to other parts of the society who can't afford them. So that's the social return business model. We call this whole process our co-designed solution. Um, yeah, so we're creative folk, and as most of you know, you can't keep us in a box for long. So off we go doing some more stuff based on the same approach. Uh, ten years ago, myself and my co-founders, Inika and Hester, uh, together with Fiona, founded Nairobits. It's a digital design school for young people from the slums of Nairobi. Ten years later, fast forward, there's like 700 alumni, and these are a couple of them. We were discussing with them how could we make a mobile solution, because all the young people have mobile phones, to tackle um, increases in violence, crime rates, corruptions. We came up with a serious game, and it's a board game. So the mobile game had to wait. Uh, this board game is really fun to play, it's quite hardcore. You can uh, kill, burn and everything. But if you want to win, you have to take the community route. And that means you have to build schools, hospitals. If you build a school, when you go to work, people earn more money. So the community group solution works for everybody, and you learn that playing the game. Um, this is another example from Mongolia. My colleagues worked with furniture makers there in a very rural place, um, and they contributed to the uh, Return to Sender collection, a beautiful range of products, all from emerging economies sold in the HEMA. Um, so these lovely sneakers, of which I'm also wearing a pair, um, are made in combination with creative talents in Burkina Faso and in the Netherlands. Burkina Faso is like landlocked. Um, the only way to get any goods out of the country is via war-torn neighbors. Um, okay, so they have some problems there, but they have loads of creative talents, just like anywhere. We looked for them and been able to make these beautiful shoes, a high-end sneaker. The next one will hopefully come from Colombia. So this is what we're talking about with co-design solutions. We really believe that this approach of making things together, using creative industry, combining forces, can tackle poverty issues. Um, <laughs> it's beautiful, we think, because it contributes to new, diverse, um, creativity and beauty that might not otherwise ever exist, because we bring these groups of people together. Um, the solutions that get created, they have to be culturally appropriate, because we make them with the people uh, for whom they will be used. Um, and because we make products, we create the potential for a revenue stream, whereby we can think of the sustainable future of these solutions. So. I've got 50 seconds left. <laughs> and I hope I can have convinced you that there is hope to tackle poverty. Uh, Hans Rosling has shown us that it is decreasing anyway, which is a really cool thing. Um, and for the folk who we still want to help bring their talents to fruition in life, that this is a good way to go about it, and we hope to see more of this kind of thing. Thank you.